Hi there, I'm Mike, and what I have for you today is a video that I, I should have done a long, long, long time ago. Um, I just finished getting the new comic boxes, or uh, I think I've heard them called the publication boxes, and uh, with some recent Yak Face rumors and maybe some upcoming reveals at PulseCon, cross fingers, who knows? Um, we might be getting some more soon, so I figured it was time to talk about this line, whether you like it or not, it exists and I actually like it. So we might be getting some new ones. We've already gotten two waves of them and I haven't really made any videos on them whatsoever. So I, I figured I like I should, I should talk about them, right? So the first wave, I wanna talk about the first wave just briefly, cause I don't want this to be super crazy long or anything, but I do, I do wanna talk about it. So there were four figures in this first wave and they were part of the, uh, this 50th anniversary of Lucasfilm thing going on. Uh, and there was like a whole timeline on the back, uh, which I, you've seen on before. It's, it was on pretty much every specialized figure that came out last year and then somewhat into this year because a lot of figures that came out this year should have come out uh, last year. But uh, I, I like them, and it's not actually the first box we've gotten like these, because the first box we got like these was this uh, exclusive Skywalker Strikes. So this was the first one that was kind of done uh, like comic books. And, you know, you open it up, it's got some Velcro. You got the figure in here. You got a bunch of accessories in here. Uh, I think you can still get these super cheap on, like, Best Buy uh, and, and stuff like they go on sale a lot. If you don't have this, it's actually a, a decent figure, even for just the accessories. Like if you can get this for like 15 bucks, uh, just all these accessories is kind of worth it. But anyways, so this was modeled directly after the comics because Luke wore that in the comics that these were based in. You can see that. So they kind of took that idea and they released these four releases. Let me, oh no, don't fall. Okay, right, right here. Uh, they were all comic based. Uh, so we have, and it was, it's some, it was some interesting options they chose. Let me see if I can get all of these in camera here. It's really hard because, you know, cameras are weird with their depths and whatnot. So we got uh, Carnor Jax, which actually isn't Carnor Jax. Uh, it's, um, oh man, I can't remember the other guy's name right now. It starts with an, it starts with an F, I think. Ooh, I should know this off the top of my head. I'm sure someone will put it. I'll probably put it on the screen. Uh, it's just one of those things like you know it and in conversation you bring it up. But then like when when the moment arises, you're like, what is that? And your your brain just like, nah, nope, you're not going to remember it. No matter what, it'll probably come to me in like five minutes when I stop thinking about it. Anyways, but I, I just know this isn't Carnor Jax. This is the other. Kierkanos. Ooh, got it. See, Kierkanos. Uh, this is really Kierkanos. Um, visually speaking. So they've acknowledged that they got this wrong. Uh, and that's kind of one of those things like Hasbro's like, yeah, we made that mistake. Uh, but kind of same thing. So, it, but, but not quite because there's only, there's no extra, bunch of extra accessories in this one. Yeah, a little blurb about uh, the wrong guy. And then of course he came in, in here like this. Uh, they also released this Darth Maul, which is my favorite one. And I have the figures behind them. So we'll talk about that. Uh, again, there's nothing on the back because it's just that 50th anniversary, but this is the Sith Apprentice Darth Maul. What's weird about this is, yeah, they've, they've got the, the Velcro on the top corners, so there's nothing on the bottom, and they don't really hold that well, but it's okay. So this we have this Darth Maul from the Sith Apprentice comics. Um, I don't think any of these have been canon comics. These are all kind of EU comics. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure this wasn't a can. It's been so long. I don't remember. Uh, this, I know Star Wars Adventures is not canon. I don't know why they didn't do the original Marvel run that Jackson appeared in. Because uh, now that it, I, I can understand it if you know it was still Dark Horse or if that was Dark Horse. But that was Marvel. And now <laughs> Star Wars is owned by Disney. Marvel's owned by Disney. Star Wars comics are being done by Marvel again. And not Dark Horse like these were. These were Dark Horse comics. The original Jackson was a Marvel comic. I don't get why they did that. Uh, but then we got a, a Jackson here. He's a he's a space bunny in a space suit. Uh, and I I like it. He's one of those characters that, uh, you know, is, you always kind of joke about and you know exists, but you don't take seriously uh, until they made a figure of it. And then we have uh, the comic version of 
one of the more popular book series, Heir to the Empire. Um, I don't know why they chose this, but uh, uh, it's, it's not that big of a deal, I guess. It is cool to get Luke Skywalker in a different costume. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about what he came with. He did have a, a little bit of a different look, although the look that we got didn't look anything like this whatsoever. Um, in fact, I haven't read the comic version, but to me, this looks more like Dark Empire Luke. But again, I've, I haven't read the, the comics. Like, this looks closer to what we get. Uh, anyways, let's get these out of the way. We can put these all back here. We can just talk briefly about the figures here. So again, this is uh, Kier Kanos. Uh, and the main difference is the this incredible... Oh, this, this soft goods right here is really nice. This is resplendent. Uh, so he's basically, he's literally just... <laughs> an Imperial Royal Guard. We've gotten this many times before with a little gun, same body. Uh, he has a different cape uh, with this gorgeous, I think this is like purple coloring on, uh, underneath uh, and this uh, like force pike. Kind of look, it looks like a, um, like a sculpting tool. Uh, anyways, so uh, it's a figure we've got before. It's not a hundred percent accurate, but you know, it's, for, for what it is, for being a minor character no one's ever heard of, uh, or, or most casual Star Wars fans haven't heard of, uh, I feel like it's kind of it's kind of close enough, to be honest with you. Uh, I know not everyone will, will share that opinion, but for me, uh, it's, it's close enough. And I really liked having an extra guard, and I really hope that they make us a, 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 Keir, a, a Connor Jax, but in a Kier Kanos box, uh, and that way we can fix it if we want to. Um, we can put, you know, Kier Kanos and, and Conor Jax. I don't know. Uh, one day they might do that. Uh, here, we got a Darth Maul. Now, this one is a little bit different, whereas this is mostly a figure we've got, except for the cloak and this weapon. Uh, this is half a brand new figure. So from the waist down, this is the same Darth Maul as the very first figure in the wave, I believe. I think he was number two, number, number two in the first wave. Uh, was the Darth Maul. But from the waist up, this is all new sculpting. New chest, new arms, uh, new head. Uh, the lightsaber I find to be a little bit less um, flimsy than the one, the original one came with. I I love this figure. This is my favorite Darth Maul right now. Until we get a, a different Darth Maul that's better, uh, I really hope one day they give us a Darth uh, Until we get Season 7 Clone Wars Darth Maul which is supposedly coming out soon. But he's got butterfly joints uh, and everything. And I'm not going too into detail with these because they've been out for a while. And if you haven't seen them yet, I feel like that's kind of on you. Um, next, I'm going to talk about Jackson because this one's interesting. He's actually one of my favorite figures, but uh, he's he's mostly a Luke Skywalker. And of course, you know this by now because this is, this is old. But uh, his legs are farm boy Luke legs. His arms and chest are X-Wing Luke arms and chest. Uh, they did give him a new kind of molded belt with these blasters, which I'm pretty sure are the same blasters that I want to say Dr. Afra and Jaina Solo came with. Um, and he got two of those, one for each. And of course, the head is new and the shoulder armor is new. So we have a couple new bits, the belt, the shoulder armor, and the head uh, on what I think are actually pretty decent reuse. Like being really into the 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 line i could pick these out but i don't i don't think it actually looks that bad you know and, and before you say oh look it's a bucky o'hare <laughs> this jackson comic predates uh the bucky o'hare comic in series and popularity so uh, it was not a straight copy it's just one of those things where you have two things that happen to kind of look similar uh and lastly i want to talk about Heir to the Empire, because mine is a little different. First, we're going to talk about this little guy, the Salamiri here. Now, immediately, I put this on Grand Admiral Thrawn, because if you've read the books or the comic, you would know that this little guy belongs on Grand Admiral Thrawn's shoulders, uh, because that's like he's always got one. Uh, and this is actually one of the reasons why Heir to the Empire... Like, their whole depiction of clones and all that stuff, none of it aged well. None of it aged well past... Attack of the Clones in 2002, you know, so it's not even like, oh, it was Disney throwing out the EU that made Heir to the Empire not age well. No, uh, 
it, it, the prequels unaged this well. But uh, if you're if you're into End of the Empire, cool. Uh, I definitely don't like it as much as I used to. Um, but anyways, what I did because what what Hasbro did was they took the Dagobah Luke, one of the best Lukes, mind you, in the entire. Uh, line and one of my favorite Luke's I've done a whole review on it if you want to go take a look at it so uh, they released him with a green lightsaber painted black and that was it like that's all that's all they did so what I did was I took this gun belt from a uh, Bespin Luke I got extra and I took this vest that I got from Han Solo uh, the very first Han Solo release uh, and I've sort of I've just kind of spiced it up using a little bit of uh, maybe like I'm not copying anyone I've seen. Uh, I'm sure other people have done something like this. I'm not saying this is wholly my original design and, and I own this, but I, I, didn't, I didn't see someone else do this and I go, oh, yeah, I want that. Um, but like my buddy West, uh, Action Man 8000 uh, on Instagram, um, he does stuff like this. So that kind of inspired me. To just kind of, you know, just kind of mess around and see what I can create on my own. Uh, I thought about using Han Solo's gun belt, but I like that this had a little spot for his lightsaber. So if I wanted to hang the lightsaber on the belt, I could. Uh, and that's why I went with the Bespin Luke one. Anyways, I really like how this came out. Uh, I think it actually looks pretty cool. Uh, way better than just the, the regular one. And... and, and Right now, it's the only custom figure I have on my shelves. Like I've, I've got another spot for customs that people have sent me because I've got a lot of customs that people have sent me, and I've put them on a different spot on my shelf. But this one sits with my regular figure collection because it's 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 a custom you can undo if you want. Like you could take off the belt, you could take off the jacket, and it's the same figure, you know. Anyways, anyways, I'm I am just all over the place here. But what I'm waiting, what I've been waiting to get into. Uh, is the actual figures from the new wave. So if you're still watching this, uh, no matter how far this ends up being right now, thank you so much. I don't know why that Luke can't stand. He usually is a pretty pretty good champ about that, but we'll have him leaned against my, my Chase Luke Skywalker X-Wing here that I found the other day at Target and was like, I wasn't planning on buying this wave. And I don't know why I'm talking about this. It's not what the video is about, but... <laughs> <laughs> but bear with me. I saw this and I was like, oh, a chase? Yeah, I'll get it. Anyways, but uh, what I want to talk about are the next wave of these figures, the uh, these publication figures. So uh, on the side, you know, they've got kind of the same thing. They all kind of look the same from the side. And what I like about these uh, and what I really want about these uh, is I like to put them on the back of my shelves to kind of line the wall to give some, like these are visually interesting. Uh, now this is the first one we've gotten from like the new Canon. Actually, these are all from the new Canon uh, comics. The old ones weren't, they were more EU. These are from new Canon comics and this is Sergeant Creel. Now uh, I've got, I'm working on, I say this, uh, we'll see if it comes true. I'm working on a video about the Bad Batch, uh, and Sergeant Creel will make an appearance in this. He's also going to make an appearance in the Stormtrooper video I'm working on. So he's going to have two appearances, and the reason he's going to show up in the Bad Batch is he's part of uh, Task Force 99, and uh, it's kind of interesting because uh, originally, you know, Bad Batch was a concept created for the Clone Wars. The Clone Wars got canceled. Uh, then the people that do the Star Wars comics took that Bad Batch com uh, concept and they were like, okay, let's let's make a Stormtrooper squadron like Bad Batch since we're not going to do Bad Batch. Uh, but then <laughs> the the season, you know, they, they started, they made one final season of, of Clone Wars and they, they animated the Bad Batch and now the Bad Batch has its own uh, its own show, which I, I like. And I've got all the Bad Batch figures. I don't know why I can't get this. I don't like to cut this because I don't want to... Um, I like to be able to put them back in if I want. That, that works. Anyways, so this guy both <laughs> predates and postdates the Bad Batch figures, which is weird. Uh, even though he's inspired by the, back, the Bad Batch... Uh, there's a whole squadron of Task Force 99. That's what I'm getting at here. Uh, 
And we're going to get more of these, is the rumor from, from Yak Face. The, I believe the next one's supposed to be um, Mike, the Slicer Stormtrooper. But they're all just Stormtroopers uh, with specialties. This guy, Sergeant Creel, is the leader. And what I love about this, uh, it's the new body. Uh, you know, when they said they were going to do a Sergeant Creel, a lot of people made fun of just... Uh, how he would just be like a stormtrooper lightsaber and people were just taking stormtroopers off the shelves and putting lightsabers in their hands uh and, and saying look i made a sergeant creel which a funny joke but uh i'm glad that it's it's more than that so we we got the new stormtrooper body which is a plus uh he has a holster for his blaster which is a plus because the new stormtroopers don't have that he's got just a ton of stuff on on his legs like the the pouches this little data pad thing uh he's got the the empire pauldron here he's got a little rocket pack backpack thing uh you know he's, he's just got a lot of accoutrement here accoutrements and whatnot and i i love this figure i'm glad that they're doing weird stuff like this because you know they're right. Ultimately, he is just a stormtrooper with a lightsaber. But you know, they Hasbro went hard with this, and I appreciate this so much that we have now uh, just a a lightsaber. It looks to me like this is a. I should have looked this up. I'm sure this is a lightsaber we've seen before. I think it's one of the ones that came with General Grievous, or maybe one of the ones that came with like. Plo Koon or Kit Fisto. I'll probably post a blurb on screen about whose it is. I should have looked it up beforehand and I, I didn't. But uh, I just, I, I love so much about what this figure is. Uh, the, I, I can't wait to get more. I can't wait to get the whole, the whole set. Like I, they're, they're hopefully doing the whole squadron. They won't just stop with two. Like, you know, I want uh, I want the sniper dude. I want the big dude. Uh, I love this so much, and I love just how vibrant the lightsaber looks. So we got uh, we got Sergeant Creel here, and uh, you know in, inside there's a little blurb on Sergeant Creel. It says Sergeant Creel, for, formerly undercover agent five two four one, serves as the leader of an elite group of stormtroopers, Task Force ninety nine, better known as Scar Squadron, under the direction direct command of Darth Vader. Uh, and that's, you know, a better picture of him. So we're starting off strong with with this. Uh, and then we're going to go to a little bit of a valley here. Uh, now, <laughs> before you immediately turn this off, uh, you know, I, I did. I bought this. And not only did I buy this, but I got uh, pretty maligned on Twitter for saying that I wasn't happy about buying it, but I was gonna buy it. Which is just so weird that people care about how you spend your money on Twitter. Like me buying this is gonna kill the line. You know, uh, one person buying one thing isn't isn't the end of the world. Uh, now, is this guy perfect? No, but hear me out. I have a, I have a good defense of, of Hasbro on this. Uh, I, I think Hasbro has done some really stupid things and I'm not one of those guys that will Although it might seem like it sometimes. I'm not one of those guys that will blindly defend Hasbro. But I, I genuinely see where Hasbro came from on this. This is Black Kersantan. Uh Now, a lot of people who know Black Kersantan know him from the Book of Boba Fett. He is uh, arguably the best part of the Book of Boba Fett. And if he was your first you know, introduction to Black Chrysanthemum, and then you see this, uh, yeah, uh, this is this is dumb. This is bad. And even if he wasn't, like even even if even if you did read the comics that this was from, this is from the Star Wars comics. There's a whole fight when they introduced him. Like I remember, it was a big deal when they introduced Black Chrysanthemum. He's basically he was a black Wookiee, uh, <laughs> you know, and that was pretty much it. He, he, he appeared, uh, I didn't read, I think I didn't read past like 2017 or 2018 of this comic. I can't remember when I stopped exactly, but I don't remember him appearing in a lot of issues. It was mostly this little, I, I remember this little arc where he fought Obi-Wan. Um, Vader hired Boba Fett and Black Chrysanthemum, uh 
to go after Obi-Wan, and that's that's what he looked like. He, he even looks big there. But in Hasbro's defense, uh, I, I genuinely don't think when they decided to do this character, they knew that Black Kersantan was going to be a big part of the book of Boba Fett and, and such like a, a, a breakout character. I genuinely don't think they, they, they thought that that would be a thing. Um, so when they decided to make this guy, uh, he was a rather minor and obscure character that most people, unless you read the comics, which again, uh, a very <laughs> comics are genuinely kind of a, a small part of the star Wars phantom. Uh, a fandom, I should say, not phantom. Most, most Star Wars fans, even diehard Star Wars fans, like I've got, I've got friends that know more about Star Wars than me. But for a lot of people, the the comics are a uh, are a blind spot for a lot of them. I'm the only one of my friends I knows that even for a while actively read the uh, the comics. I don't, it's really hard, even with Chewbacca, it's hard to get that in his hand. Uh, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to I'm going to post it on here because I love that you can post it here. Anyways, as I was saying, um, I'm positive that when Hasbro decided to do this guy, they did not know he was going to be a big part of the book of Boba Fett. Like, how, how could they know? It's very obvious that they had they they had no idea about any stuff that was happening in that movie, uh, on that show, I mean. They they didn't get a list. They didn't get figures. They didn't have figures ready to go. In fact, the only two figures that we got from Book of Boba Fett, there we go, kind of fits like that. That's a good way to put it. So it kind of sits on his back like that, but I, I kind of like it up. I want to see if I can get it up. Anyways, the only two figures we've gotten in the Book of Boba Fett, Boba Fett line are <laughs> uh, Fennec Shand, <laughs> who... Uh, looks more more like like sure she appears in book of boba fett but uh it's clearly the uh, uh obi-wan or a mandalorian season two uh fennec shand and then we have uh the boba fett which is uh his mandalorian season two look not his book of boba fett look so they clearly were like well we got to get some book of boba fett stuff out uh and hasbro just kind of it's all it was all kind of damage control type stuff rather than actual intentional Book of Boba Fett stuff. So uh, Black Kersantan here was 100% something that they did not know was going to happen. Uh, so, and, and and keep in mind, you know, if, if Book of Boba Fett had never come out, uh, or if he, if he did not, if it did not feature Black Kersantan, you know, you, you would look at this and you'd be like, yeah, it's fine. Like, it's not great. Uh, Chewbacca's body is is a little skinny for, for Black or Santin. And that's true. This is the wrong body. But for a relatively minor character, uh, it's more forgivable than for a big breakout character that it could have been. And I'm glad that Hasbro is uh, giving us a Book of Boba Fett uh, you know, Black Chrysanthemum, and and it's going to be a whole new body. They said that. Uh, and obviously, they can reuse that for a Captain Tarful and all that stuff. Uh, and I'm glad they're doing that. But I'm just, what I'm saying is, uh, I understand why this exists. I don't think it's as bad as I thought it would be. Like, when I first saw the pictures, I was all, I think I, I just commented on, on Yak Post's post. I just said, I think I said, no. Like, no. That's not okay. No. Uh, but then I just kind of, I don't know. I, I, I kind of got over it, I guess. It's not my favorite figure in the in the world. It's not going to be my favorite figure in the world. But uh, I don't think it's bad. Like, I, I think the face is actually pretty good. I like the scar. Um, I think I think the face actually looks pretty good. Uh, and, you know, if you want, you can just make him another different Wookiee. Like, he can just look be on the shelf. You can have him with, like, a Chewbacca... And uh, that one Wookiee, Zalbar, uh, and just have like a, a, a Wook crew, uh, and it, it's fine. Like, it doesn't have to be Black or Santin if you don't want him to be, but uh, you also just don't have to buy him if you don't like him. 
I don't mind having a comic version of him. Like it's not, it's not terrible. One of the problems with the Wookiee mold here is that it's just, it's not very artic like it's articulated, but it's not very posable. Like there's not a lot you can really do with, with his body to make him look like he's gonna be doing anything crazy. Like his arms with these little hairs coming down, like they, they're just, they're going to hinder all kinds of articulation. I'm not defending it saying that this is great. I'm not even saying that you should buy this. All I'm saying is that I understand why it exists. Um, and it's not as bad as it could have been. And it's not as bad as you think it is, I guess, is what I'm saying here. So there, let's like you know it's the the face is pretty good. He even does have a, a decent like paint wash on. Maybe not all over the place, but definitely like it looks dirty in some places up here. So it looks like they tried. It just it just could have been better, uh, and I'm fully acknowledging that it could have been better. But uh, I just don't think it's as bad as people want it to be. Um, and of course, it's not the version we want, but we're getting the version we want. So, you know, like, I just, I just guess, just get over it is my, is my point. Uh, next, we're going to look at this Princess Leia. This is actually the one uh, of all these that I wanted to get the most. So I've, I've got the standalone Princess Leia comic. It's great. It's a great comic. Uh, a lot of these comics take place in between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back, which is a time period we haven't seen a lot, which is, it's nice to see that. So there's like a whole uh, Alderaan thing. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Is that, I'm sorry, I didn't read the bio for Black Chrysanthemum. So this says the ferocious and skilled, oh, this is, is it blurry? Let me, let me see if I can. My, my camera stopped auto-focusing for some reason. The ferocious and skilled Wookiee gladiator turned bounty hunter, Black Chrysanthemum has worked for the likes of Jabba the Hutt and Darth Vader. You know, it's, it's, it's fine. It's, that's what it says. Let's go ahead and read this before I forget. So it says, Princess Leia Organa was one of the greatest leaders of the Rebel Alliance, fearless on the battlefield and dedicated to the ending of the Empire's tyranny. So let's go ahead and pop her open here. Uh, I, like I said, I've been kind of looking forward to this one the most because I, I genuinely like Princess Leia. She's a great character. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's one of those things growing up. They didn't really like to make girl characters for boys because uh, and this might be true i don't know i didn't i don't work in toy sales but uh they said you know girl boys didn't want girl characters but i i always did like uh i always i always wanted an rc growing up uh in the transformers you know there was the the was a gloria baker never got a proper car in mask uh it always seemed like whatever girl character there was the girl characters got the shaft even in um, Power of the Force 2, you know, they made a, a Princess Leia and she was the hardest one to get for me. Uh, I could never find her on shelves because I think they underpacked her in all the waves. Uh, and she was also the worst looking one, which sucked for her. Uh, but here we have Princess Leia and I think she looks great. So what we have here, we have the Hoth, or actually we have the Bespin Escape Leia is what they did. They, they gave us the Bespin Escape body um, with a brand new head. This is a, a new head with new hair. We have Padme's kind of poncho thing um, in a different color. It's not painted, it's just molded. She has new gloves and she has a new gun belt, which I really like. And then, of course, we've got her blaster, which she can put in there. Uh, and then she has... Uh, Stormtrooper Blaster, which actually looks to me, yeah, it's one of the new ones. Okay, so I, I'm gonna put the Stormtrooper Blaster in a hand because I always, I always kind of like that that look of Princess Leia rocking a Stormtrooper Blaster, like she kicked someone's ass and and now she's uh she's gonna kill him with their own guns. Like I think I think that's that's a fun look. I let's get this oh let's get this face in here. Look at this face. Come on. Come on, focus up. Focus up. There it goes. Look at that face. That is a good looking face. That's a great looking face. Oh my goodness. I love that. Yeah, you know that, I don't know. There's not a lot to talk about. She's, it's, it's a Princess Leia we've mostly seen before. And that's kind of the thing 
with this line is it's new versions of characters and new characters with things we've seen, you know, with, with parts we've seen before. Some new, but mostly reuse. On this one, the new is the gloves and the head. With Black Chrysanthemum, it's a new head. With Creole, it's just the kind of accoutrements and stuff. Um, so we even have less new than what we had, at least with Darth Maul here, we had half a new figure. Um, but I feel like for, for what it is, it's absolutely fine. I really like the look of this. This is a, a battle Leia that I'm super into. I genuinely like that. Uh, and then lastly, let's, let's talk Infinity's Darth Vader or the redeemed Darth Vader. But before we talk about that, look, look at, Look at the look at the, what is up with Luke Skywalker's face. I have never read this comic, and actually, I don't think this is a canon comic. Um, th this it just looks so bad. And in fact, I, I took a picture of this and posted it on Twitter, uh, and Mark Hamill himself liked it, so that was kind of fun. So this is the Infinity's Darth Vader. Uh, we've got some pictures of Vader. So it's like an alternate telling of Return of the Jedi. Like, what if? What if Vader redeemed himself? So we've got a, a white Darth Vader uh, here instead of a black Darth Vader. I do kind of wish that he he had a, like a blue lightsaber. Um, but, you know, in Return of the Jedi, or not in Revenge of the Sith, when Anakin turned into Darth Vader at the end, he didn't immediately go out and get a red lightsaber. You know, he's, he fought Obi-Wan with his blue lightsaber because he didn't really have time <laughs> But I guess if you have time to uh, to get a white outfit, <laughs> if you have time to get your outfit tailored uh, to be a completely different color, uh, to, to make sure people know that you're a good guy now, um, you have time to maybe build a new lightsaber. But uh, I, it's really it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, but what I love about this is just just in the last month, this is the third Darth Vader we've gotten in the line uh now granted this figure was announced a while ago so it's not like oh this is a surprise brand new and the other two were announced much 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 later than this, this is actually the first one announced from all three uh but uh whew, i do love that white so this is the Empire Strikes Back Vader, and you can tell because he has butterfly joints. Um, so his arms move back and forward like that. It's actually the same Vader body that came on the most recent Vader I got, the Ralph McQuarrie Vader, the concept art Vader. So it's the same Vader. Obviously, the head's different. Um, and the head's the main difference here uh, is they wanted that Ralph McQuarrie look, which I've already done a video on this. So if you want to go take a look at it, you can. But this... This is the redeemed Darth Vader. He's all white. He's got these nice silver eyes, which I really like. I'm trying to get that to focus up there. Uh, we actually have paint. So one of the problems I have with the uh, with the Macquarie Vader is there's no paint on any of the stuff. So we actually have some paint apps here, which is nice. Um, yeah, like I said, the only kind of real problem is this this red lightsaber i think and and you know the original redeemed vader the 3.75 inch redeemed vader uh also came with a, a red lightsaber so that's probably why they did this all all uh red uh instead of making it blue i just think it would have been better if it were blue i think it would have kind of gone with the whole redeemed look uh and and look better with the white Kind of a less stark contrast between <laughs> the the white and blue than the the red and and the white, but I do like it. It's also could you pick a Hoth Vader <laughs> or something like that, or he just he's walking through snow. Um, maybe they'll give us something like this, like a Christmas Vader. Uh, I know today they just announced the next wave of. Christmas figures are holiday figures, which we actually saw last year because they were supposed to come out last year uh, and didn't. So I don't know. Um, I, I do like this. I like this a lot. I'm glad that I have this. 
Uh, let's put this here. Like that. So we got we got two lightsabers here. Uh, and they actually kind of work because oops, don't don't you don't you fall. Don't you fall. The problem with some lightsabers is you don't want them you don't want them to fall. There we go. Oh yeah. That's the stuff right there. That's actually, you know, it's actually it's not that bad. Um I know people are like, "Well, you know, it should be great." Uh, I I get I get that. Obviously, I I want things to be great, but I just I feel like I like this. This is the kind of fun stuff, this fun obscure stuff, non-mainline. Yeah, it's mostly repaints and reuse, but you know what? It's not that big of a deal. We get plenty of new stuff. We've had more new figures this year than we've ever had in the entire line. Like, like not the entire line, but per year. You know what I mean? So like the line started in 2013. In in the first phase, which lasted from 2013 to 2014, there were only 12 figures in that whole phase. That was it. Uh, in from between 2014 and 2015, there were 16 or 17 figures between those two years. And that was it, you know, uh, and then starting from 2015 in phase three and kind of going on, uh, we started getting more reuse and more repaints. Uh, the first, I think blatant repaint was Dr. Afra, which was, was originally a Jaina solo, you know? So like, do I love it? No, but I'm okay with it. And being someone who's collected uh, Transformers for a long time or Marvel Legends or, or Power Rangers, like, you know, it's not like this is the only line that this happens in. And a lot of these, I think, are pretty good reuse. So, like, for instance, this Leia, perfectly fine reuse. Um, the I think that the Jackson is clever. I think that, the you know, if I was just casual fan and not a super nerd about this stuff i don't even know if i would have noticed that this was luke skywalker's feet and uh, x-wing luke's chest you know um so just little things like that like is it perfect no but are they still fun yeah i'm glad i have them uh and i can't wait to see what comes out so i think the next wave we know uh of two of them that yak face is rumored one is the next one of scar squadron and that's gonna be mike and he's got like a blue visor kind of thing going on and also Mara Jade um so looking forward to getting her she's I mean she's probably going to be a reuse of the Jaina Solo Dr. Afra body which again fantastic body fantastic mold great great one to reuse specifically for that purpose so uh I I'm looking forward to it so bring it on can't wait to see what the other two are because you know there's been four figures in kind of each wave of these uh, so let me know down the downstairs area. Is this, is this what you're into? Were you into any of these comics? Did you read any of these comics before you knew of these picture of these figures? Uh, so it's one of those things like I haven't read all of these comics, but I knew of them. So for instance, uh, I did read the princess Leia. I did read the star Wars, uh, one, and I did actually read the, the Sergeant Creel. So these I knew of beforehand before they got announced. Uh, the, the Darth Vader Infinities, it's one of the ones I knew existed because I remember seeing the original figure, but no, I had no idea. I, I haven't ever read that. Uh, this Darth Maul one, nope. Uh, th I knew who Jackson was, uh, but I, I had never, um, no idea about that specific comic he's from. Uh, I've read the Heir to the Empire books. I have not read the comic and I have actually never read Crimson Empire. But again, it's one of those ones like Twin Engines of, of Destruction where like I know they exist. I know generally what they're about, but I've never actually read them. I didn't collect them, things like that. Because, uh, you know, for a while I just wasn't into the comics and I didn't get into the comics until uh, Marvel started redoing comics. I think it was, was it 2015? is when Marvel got the license to do Star Wars comics. And that's, I, I figured that was a good jumping on point. So I started buying every uh, Marvel, Star Wars Marvel comic they made. Uh, anyways, so this, this has been about like 40 minutes or so. Um, 
I just kind of wanted to open these up on camera, give you my thoughts on them, some some information about them. Let me know down in the downstairs area, what did you think of these? Did you get any of them? Uh, I, I think everyone in their collection uh, should at least have Creole. If you're a big Vader fan, that's a good Vader to have. And it's kind of a fun visually looking Vader, like a good guy Vader. Uh, and I genuinely do think uh, the Leia is good. And honestly, you can skip the Black Chrysanthemum. As, as much as I'm saying, you know, it's not as bad as you think or whatever. Uh, yeah, you can totally skip it. And I don't think you're missing out on anything, especially since we are getting a proper Book of Boba Fett Black Chrysanthemum. Uh, I don't hate that I own it. Um, like I kind of thought I would, uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely the weakest one of all these. And and if you didn't get it, fine. But he's, he is actually pretty good. He's better than he has any right to be uh, for what he is. Anyways, so let me know what you think down the downstairs area. I'd love to also take a moment and thank these people here for supporting me on Patreon and a Black Series level or higher. These people have stuck with me even through my little drought of not making as many videos as I wanted to. So thanks so much for doing that. Thanks for sticking with me this far. Thanks for watching, and I will see you later. Bye.